Iona McGowan, also known as Scottish Girl in America. I'm originally from Perth, Scotland, but I moved here to Cambridge, Massachusetts in 2020. I absolutely love living here in America, but I love even more sharing my Scottish culture with my new friends and everyone online. I'm a media host and content creator. I absolutely love making content, sharing my Scottish heritage and the cultural differences that I've experienced as an expat moving to America. Today we're at the beautiful food lab at the Foundry in Cambridge and we're going to be making a traditional Scottish dessert, Cranachan. Cranachan is a traditional Scottish dessert and it's usually made to celebrate the end of the harvest season for raspberries in August. This dessert is very close to my heart and brings back a lot of fond memories. I grew up in the berry land of Scotland in Blair Gowrie and remember walking through the fields on my way to go fishing in the River Erich with my dad and maybe pinching a few on the way for energy. Cranachan showcases all of Scotland's most delicious bits. We have fresh raspberries, double cream, oats, honey, and of course, whiskey. So the first thing we're going to do is pop two tablespoons of oats into a pan, and we're gonna brown them off until they're golden and giving off a lovely cookie kind of smell. Lovely, do keep an eye on these, they can turn really quickly. Now whilst these do their thing, we can start on our raspberries. So for the raspberries, you want to kind of have two types. We're gonna mush one of them to make a puree and the other we're gonna keep whole and that's gonna really give us like some nice texture. We'll also pop all the measurements up for you and in the comments as well. So take your first raspberries and we're going to mush them up. You can do this in a food processor, but I'm really lazy and I don't want to do all that cleaning, so we're just going to do it in a bowl. You can also, if you're not a seed person, you can also put these through a sieve after, but I kind of like how authentic it is with the seeds, so I'm just going to leave the seeds in. Oopsie. Oh, it smells so nice and fresh. Mm. Maybe cut that out. <laughs> now, depending how tart you like things, it's up to you if you'd like to add an optional bit of honey to your raspberry puree. I think I'm gonna keep mine tart, because um, I quite like that. Mushy. Beautiful. So now we have our mushed up raspberries and our whole raspberries. We'll pop them to the side and we'll check on our oats over here. Hmm, nothing yet. Might need to turn the induction up a little bit. So this is such a special recipe for me. When I was growing up on Sundays in the summer when the berry harvest did take place, my dad would often come home with boxes of raspberries because they were so cheap. They would just sell them on the side of the road and they would just feel like little jewels in your mouth and it was just really special memories. And I mean, I don't think I was 18 for sure, but we did get the whiskey version, but it was so good. I think I definitely slept well on a Sunday night. Okay. So while they do their thing, we can head over to the best bit, which is the creamy whiskey cream. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna layer that in between our raspberries and our raspberry puree with our oats. Growing up in Berry County, it was a really small town, um, but it was really charming in its own ways. We had a lot of people that came over from Europe to pick the berries in the summer, and we used to always give them lifts back and forth to the main town. Um, so we met some really interesting people, and that was a really nice part of my childhood as well, actually. So, pop the cream in. Mm -mm. Oh yes, it's starting, amazing. So since I've moved here to America, I moved here in the height of COVID in 2020, would you believe? It was pretty wild. I got on a basically empty plane with a wedding dress and a cat. <laughs> 
And when we arrived, I had never been to America before. I had never seen the apartment that I was gonna move into. And it was the middle of the night. I was pretty nervous. So I slept for two weeks on a floor without a mattress because everything was delayed in COVID. Um, but as soon as I arrived, everyone was so lovely. You know, when the mattress did arrive, the neighbors came and helped us lift it in and made the bed and everything. And I just feel like I was welcomed straight away. So it wasn't that bad, you know. Um, but yeah, I've been here for two years now. Made some amazing friends, absolutely loving my time here. And the resources that we have in Cambridge are amazing. You know, I only found out about CCTV, the Cambridge Community Television, before Christmas. Today we're at the Food Lab at the Foundry in Cambridge. It's absolutely stunning. They have so many different rooms and resources here. I would really urge you guys to come along and check it all out. So yeah, when I first moved, I started making content to kind of tell my friends and family back home about what I'm up to in America. And before I knew it, it just kind of like took off. I think everyone thought this strange Scottish girl is having a whale of a time in America. And that's kind of how all my content took off. And that's how we're here. So these oats are definitely taking a while. So let's head back to our whipping cream. So to our delicious whipping cream, we are going to add the most important ingredient, whiskey. Now you can use like a single malt. Um, I've gone for blended whiskey today. I just felt like it. I think there's a lot of whiskey snobbery going around. In Scotland, a blended is looked down on, but I think there's some amazing blenders out there. Johnny Walker's obviously a big and very well-known brand. So what we're gonna do is add two tablespoons of the whiskey to our double cream, also known as whipping cream in America. And we're gonna whip that up into a delicious, stiff peak. This one's definitely a bit bougier than the one that I have at home. It's gorgeous. Okay. Perfect. This might be a bit loud, so bear with me. Our oats are definitely ready. They're giving off a lovely nutty kind of cookie smell and you can see they've kind of turned a gorgeous golden brown. Our whipped cream is also starting to do its thing. You want to be careful not to over whisk it so do keep an eye on it. Once you're getting to that stiff peak stage we can introduce some of our oats. I would start off with one tablespoon. Mm -mm. It's probably a better way to do it than this, but hey ho. As much of one tablespoon as you can get. And slowly introduce that in. This gives an amazing texture to the cream. Mm. But you might need a toothpick as well, actually. To that, we're also going to add two tablespoons of honey. So it's nice and easy to remember. Two tablespoons of whiskey, two tablespoons of honey, two tablespoons of oats. Mm -hmm. If you are in Scotland, I would advise picking up some heather honey. So that's a kind of traditional Scottish honey, and that's from the bees that feed on the heather, which is the purple kind of bush that you see growing all over Scotland. If you see some white heather, you are a very lucky person. That is like Scotland's version of a four-leaved clover. So if you see white heather, make sure to pick it up and take it with you. Okay, add that in. You will find that the whiskey kind of deflates the cream a wee bit, so don't be afraid to kick it into gear. Not that much. <laughs> okay, we're getting somewhere. This looks so good. Okay, I'm gonna take my own advice and not over whip it, even though it's so fun, isn't it? So now we have all of our components. We have our delicious, whipped cream with our whiskey and our oats. This smells so heavenly. And it's really nice if you can get it out of the mixer stand as well. Oh my God. 
They're kind of like Baileys. You could do the tip test, but I'm not going to jinx myself. So, you want it to be kind of stiff peaks. Oh, stunning. Perfect. So now, it's the fun part, and we're going to start layering our cranekin. There's lots of kind of fun, ingenious ways you can do this. I've done this in whiskey glasses before, which looks really cute. You could also do this in like a big dish and people could kind of just self-serve as well. Um, but we're gonna make the kind of personal size ones today with these wee glasses. So I like to start off with some raspberries, health is wealth. So pop in a mix of your whole raspberries with your pureed raspberries. Oh, look at those colors, so cute. Mm. And then we're gonna put in our amazing cream. Oh, my mouth is watering. I have made this for <laughs> my American friends. I also made this for the guys on the radio at Mix 104 and <laughs> they had no idea what it was. I blindfolded them and brought it in and got them to taste it for International Pudding Day. So in the UK, we, go, we don't call dessert dessert, we call it pudding. Would you like the pudding menu? They had no idea. And I was like, how hard could it be? Like, that they, they really didn't know. And they did find it a little bit boozy, but I did, it was just, I, I did maybe put a little bit of extra whiskey in there because it was 5 a.m. It was kind of funny. And I checked, they weren't driving, so it was fine. So I'm just layering again on there with my whole raspberries and my raspberry puree. There really isn't like a science to this. If you want to have three layers of raspberries and two layers of cream, that's absolutely fine. I think just do whatever feels good and also fits your cup. I think it is nice to end with a cream top though. And um, I think that does kind of help it keep a bit better in the fridge and things too. So here we go. I'm of the opinion you can make a mess and you can just like wipe it up. So go wild. Aha. Does look cute, right? And then you can sprinkle the top with some of your oats. And if you want to go even more wild, this is not traditional. Scotland might come for me on this, but you could also sprinkle a shortbread on top. So let's do that with this one. They might chuck me out of Scotland, I don't know. But I just thought I was in Trader Joe's today. I was like, what would be better than oats, sugar, cookies? Okay, so let's make this one. I wanna make this one prettier because that one is, I want to see more of the red. <clears throat> but if you're looking for an excuse for this, I do think it's a really good kind of dinner hosting thing to make. Um, and if you wanted to make a vegan version, you could do this with coconut cream. Um, and I have done that before and it's delicious. If you want a booze-free option, I cannot help you. Okay, it's not, it's against my will. It's not in my blood. It has to be a whiskey version, I'm sorry. <laughs> Perfect. Another traditional Scottish recipe, dessert pudding, and which is great for the winter time, it's called sticky toffee pudding. That is my husband's absolute favorite. It's made with treacle and dates. And it's just like an ooey, gooey kind of caramel cake with an amazing toffee sauce. Um, so look out for that because I'll be making that online as well. Oh, is that not cute, right? If I was at a dinner party, I'd be dead chuffed with this. So there you go, Scottish cranekin a traditional Scottish boozy, creamy, fresh dish. Slange, thank you for joining us on this Scottish culinary experience. I really hope that you do make Cranachan. If you do, let me know. You can get me on Instagram at Instaiona or on TikTok under Iona McGowan. I do lots of traditional cooking, cultural differences, and lifestyle recommendations for here in Boston and also back home in Scotland. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>